Welcome back to the Spiritual Mom Summit. We are joined here by Nicole hirsch Keekley. She's here to talk about healing frequencies. Um, she also is an incredible practitioner and business owner, and is just a really wise woman to have in your orbit. So I will read off her bio here, and then we will get right to it. So Nikki is an educator, mentor, and practitioner with over 20 years of experience in the foundational medicine field. She has dedicated her career to empowering providers and clients alike to connect with their inner knowing and navigate health concerns more effectively. As an educator, she is known for her engaging teaching style and ability to break down complex concepts into easy to understand terms. No matter the setting, she is committed to ensuring students walk away with the knowledge and tools to succeed. As a practitioner's practitioner, she has helped many, she's helped numerous clients achieve optimal health and use muscle testing to guide treatment. Her compassionate and holistic approach to care has earned a reputation as a trusted and respected practitioner. As Nikki, throughout her career, Nikki has remained committed to advancing the field. She continually explores new modalities and pursues further training to support her clients and students. One of which in the last year and a half or only just like 14 months? Two years in, for the Healy, you mean? Yeah. Oh, Healy is like 13 months. Yeah. 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 So really just kind of expanding into the healing frequency world in the last like 13 months and then into her own methodology of teaching muscle testing and all of that within the last two years that really birthed into the world and has been so fun to witness and be a part of. I just, I love everything that, that you do and that you stand for Nikki. So thank you for being willing to be here and just kind of share your, your story and your perspective. You've children of your own. Like she has walked through the ringer. She's not just a practitioner <laughs> who is like out there practicing. Like she has quite the story. So if you don't mind sharing kind of what got you here today, like what has shaped your path? How did you end up here? And then you can tie it into Healy, but just kind yeah. of. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm going to put these on because speaking of all the people, they will land. <laughs> like but when I was teaching class the other night online, you know, you, you just make it work, deal, deal with the things in the moment. Right. Oh my gosh. So I, I so wanted to be like, no, no, no. It's been 28 years that I've been in the holistic health community, which is so funny. There's like the wise elder in me. That's just like, we're getting up there. It's almost three decades. <laughs> I feel like I'm 22, um, yeah. which is the greatest part. Bio. <laughs> we do have to update that bio. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. Um, but it is funny because I will say like, you know, I'm almost 48 and I've, I've literally been serving the holistic health community um, like here in the Twin Cities and, you know, nationally, if you will, for for the last few years, like for that long. And it is um, I have, like I, I forget kind of how significant that is. That's like more than half of my life that I really have <laughs> devoted to like natural living and I was among a group of women a couple of weeks ago that I hadn't seen in, I don't know, probably like six months. And they were like, you literally look younger every time we see you. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, yeah, that's natural living for you. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have our moments, but, um, and that doesn't come without obviously, you know, hard work and focus and whatnot. But, um, you know, when I look at like the, like take off the practitioner hat for a minute and, and look at like why I do what I do and why I mother the way that I do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my mom, I'm the oldest of four kids and my mom got sick when I was 16 and, um, she was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease. And even though to this day, she's like, I was in remission within like four months of that, of that diagnosis. I thought my mom was going to die for two years. So mm -hmm. I, I had, you know, that traumatic experience of like, watching her be sick, which I now know are just like the side effects and the ramifications of, you know, of radiation and, and her heart tissue being radiated and then watch, you know, and watch her have a heart attack, but she had a heart attack, um, a few years later. And I had just had my first baby and it was like, mm -hmm. you know, really hard to watch all of those things. And so I was on an interview the other day and I was like, when, like, when did I know, when did I know? And I think it was even before I was 16, because when I was 10, I mean, we've talked about this before, <laughs> when I was 10, I got, you know, like 
very like two very important what I call like my very first like direct intuitive pings like the voice was very loud and I'm a little like (laughs) like where did this come from you know one is like um one was like you're gonna have your babies at home someday because I just knew like literally at 10 I was like already living my life just to be a mom um, and then the other was that I was, I was going to be a baby doctor. Like that was my language at the time. I was going to be a baby doctor and I was not set up for that. You know, <laughs> we, we, we weren't in like the scholarly family, you know, like my parents yeah. didn't go to college and that, I don't believe college is like necessary, but, um, they're just, I didn't have anybody to walk that path and say like, Oh, okay. I totally get what you want to do. Or I totally don't, but like, let's figure this out. And so I just was always felt like I was like jumping in without a nose plug and like <laughs> trying to end and didn't know how to breathe out of my nose at the same time. Right. It was just like, and so, you know, by the time I was 16 and my mom got sick, there were downloads happening all the time. Right. And, and, and I you know, had this sort of like messy relationship with God or without, or like, I kind of didn't know which end was up at the time. Cause just when I had thought I was like getting it sorted out, like, there you go and throw a cancer diagnosis on my mom. And I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. Wait a minute here. You just lost all the trust I had in this whole, you know, organization. (laughs) So it was like, it was super frustrating and, and, um, isolating and, you know, that, that whole thing. And so, I remember very specific instances in my mom's illness. You know, I, I was um, a home health aide, you know, by the time I was 16, I was working in um, nursing homes and, and um, driving to people's homes and like, no 16 year old really has any business walking into like any situation (laughs) as a healthcare need at home and like being in charge. But there I was. And um, so I was like, I was exposed to things that were really big and, um, you know, like it's interesting fast forward to now, like three decades later and caring for my mother-in-law in her hospice stage. I was like, I can't, it's really uncanny to me how much time I've spent at like in the beginning of life. I was a birth doula for 20 years and, and for 10 years prior or into the beginning of that, I, I was working in memory care units and nursing homes. Mm-hmm. And like I said, a home health aid and like a PCA and how like the end of life is just like a one string undoing at a time of all the things we see happening at the beginning of life and just how crazy and uncanny that is like how it mirrored yeah crazy crazy mirrored and so it's at the time watching um things with my mom and though my mom was young right she was like 36 when she was diagnosed Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in down at the Mayo Clinic with her like the Mayo Hospital and I remember you know swabbing her mouth with those gross little, (laughs) you know, like, and turn and turning her over and like tending to her wounds because I could, and because I wanted to, and I knew how. And so that's what I mean, where it's like, I can be right now where I am with my mother-in-law and totally, like totally own it and feel good inside it and be empowered with it because of the experiences I've had. But there were conversations that I was privy to at the time that just, I was like, what? Like these things don't make sense. I remember Mm -hmm. after a certain number of like every three months, you know, she had to show up to these follow-up visits until she was given the all clear. And at that all clear, we were sitting in front of the mad scientist with the bow tie and the, you know, crooked glass. Like I can't even, you can't make it up. Right. Whatever this oncologist, I'm not making fun of oncologists. I'm just like, it was such a like textbook, (laughs) funny little rocket scientist, you know, situation where he was like, okay, good news. Like you're, you're now in full remission, but here are some things to, um, to do, be aware of, like to watch mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. And he went down this ticker list of full blown diseases. And I remember in my 17 year old little, my, like, I, I was like, imagine me speechless. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I was so, um, like I was so appalled and I didn't really know anything from anything at the time, but I did know you're giving her a list of diseases. You're not giving her a list of what to watch okay. for. So she doesn't jump into the risk pool. Like mm-hmm. you're not even throwing her a life jacket. You're just telling yeah. her to come in here when she has breast cancer and to come in here when she's had a heart attack and to come in here when she's a type two diabetic. Right. No you know, prevention, check, no check, check. lifestyle checks, nothing. Just- go back to your life and come back when it's failing you. 
hundred percent. And so none of that added up in a way that was empowering to me. And I just, I like that never left me. Uh And so it's no, you know, accident that my, you know, one of my best friends in, in high school at that point, like junior and senior year, you know, was like a vegetarian. So then of course I like jumped on that train. Cause that makes sense. <laughs> Cause that was healthy. Cause she worked at a natural foods co-op. So she must know everything. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm grateful, right. For the experience, <laughs> but like you start in these like formative years, you're like, you conform to everything around you. If it's like in the name of health or feeling better. And I felt like crap, like within six months of my mom's diagnosis, I was diagnosed with an ulcer. And then proceeded to be sick for the next year and a half. Like I'm actually like, I wonder how I even graduated high school because I remember spending so many days driving my mom to radiation treatments or staying home to take care of my mom. And then like, mm-hmm. once she was better, I mostly couldn't stand up. Like my, the inflammation in my stomach was so bad that it was just like, felt like this feeble, sick person, like bent over all the time. Um, and so I was benched on the gymnastics team. I'd been a gymnast for nine years at that point. And that was just super like, talk yeah. about, I wasn't even a good gymnast, but I freaking loved it. I loved moving <laughs> my body. I loved like pushing my boundaries. I loved the community of my team really. And so it was just a little bit like, oh, just another, another, like being ostracized for like taking care of yourself and speaking your truth. Like, Mm -hmm. wow, it seemed that it was like a theme by then. So yeah, it was interesting to me how patterns and themes, you know, were already showing up by the time I graduated high school that were just guiding me towards like, this is not how I want to do things. Uh This is not how I want to raise my kids. This is not what I want healthcare under my roof to look like, you know, Mm -hmm. they're, and, you know, to each your own, but I just like, wow, sometimes, you know, we say, Oh, if you don't know what you want, like, where are you going to go? Well, I was very clear what I, like I, what I didn't want. Mm-hmm. And, and I even see that, you know, in my oldest right now, it's like, girl, if you have a long list of what you don't want, like that paves the way that's like half of it right there. Yeah. And, and I, I honestly just started to, you know, it went the standard route. I was going to go to college. I wanted to be like a midway for a chiropractor and, um, you know, a year and a half into my undergraduate degree, I was like, I am super lifed out here. Like I am tired of being a grown up. I'm tired of paying attention and I'm tired of paying my own way. And I'm just like, I am tired. And so I begged for a begged first time I've ever begged for a job. I had (laughs) jobs of significance. I was like a nanny, a lifeguard, a home health aide. I was like, yeah. wiping people's butts <laughs> like come on big, big and small like young and old I've been raising other people's kids All since right. I was nine yeah glamorous job but someone's got to do it I wasn't folding t-shirts at the gap like mm-hmm. and not that that's not important right it would just for whatever reason caretaking just became you know there's the path that I went down but like I was burnt out by the time I was 19 yeah. And I got in my Jeep and I drove across the country um, <laughs> and moved in with my vegetarian best friend in Mammoth Lakes, California. And, you know, where it's like two males to every one female. And, um, you know, and we climbed every day and we went hiking every day and we biked every day. And it was just like, I needed to just like, my soul needed to be fed, um, mm-hmm. but I also needed to live. And I literally had to beg for a job sweeping the floor of a convenience store of this five-star resort for six dollars an hour so you know I lived off my credit card for six months or whatever yeah um you know it came back home and jumped back into um you know being 20 and going like so university is not what I can do right now and so what I can do is like this 18 month program I can do this six month program I can't like I could see the other side of it I can yeah. see an end result fast enough to go like, and I know I'd be good at this. And so, you know, became a neuromuscular therapist and a craniosacral therapist, a birth doula. I was doing postpartum doula work before that was a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, they used to call that a nanny. I, and I know, again, I don't mean to diminish that it's been developed and evolved, but like, right. right. I was popping nipples into babies' mouths and like, hang, <laughs> you know, like I just, these were like, just was normal for me to surround my, I was like, maybe always with it. it. Maybe it's maybe made it's for <laughs> Right. <laughs> seriously oh yeah so I, I mean a super long story I just like have been yeah. around the block <laughs> right yeah well and then what what's really like what I'm seeing a lot in in the terms of the the collective I download I channel for the collective I download the children I channel for them as well but it's kind of this this huge shift is like 
we thought the shift happened because it's like more accessible and it's more out there, this holistic care, but like, they're like even more, they're like super greedy, right? They're like demanding, they want more, they need a shift. And what I love about what you have done is you were kind of like, I know I don't want this and nothing else exists out here. I'm going to make my own. And then you just found a way to make it work, which really is like that trailblazer, like warrior spirit in you that just makes it happen. And then you make it possible. You know, I'm like, I don't know where I'd be if I didn't meet you because Mm. you just already had this thing and you were the only clinic that was doing the muscle testing. And I had all the schooling, but like, didn't know what the heck I wanted to do with myself. And then it just was like, but I knew that what was going on wasn't right. And I was like, oh here's the thing like and then we create it and I just like I can't imagine having raised my kids even to this point still at six and three any other way than kind of this like blank slate you get to recreate it and that's mm-hmm. really what the kids are asking for and as a collective that's where we're going mm. it's, it's really fun to see um like the trends and patterns even when you were doing trends and patterns and mm-hmm. in terms of like muscle testing um but what is coming up and kind of what's on the horizon which is the perfect pivot into Healy because I have been feeling and working with frequencies for several years, but like in meditation, astral plane up yeah. in the ethers, right? Frequencies, <laughs> med beds. And then right. here comes this little like, what's a Healy? And what? And I was like, it's a freaking med bed. I'm like, yeah. what? Like I've been working with these for years. I was telling Sawyer many a nights, like just go to your spaceship go into your med bed and like run the frequency <laughs> for tonight and he's like okay I want the blue frequency and like literally our nightly routine looked like that before yeah. the healing because now I'm like it's a med bed in my pocket mm-hmm. you know so what drew you into um like healing frequencies and kind of how did that shift your practice your children your anything like what drew you into it in the first place so we used you know I should just back up like 18 plus 20 I don't know a year, year and a half plus ago, I closed my bricks and mortar practice and we had the fancy equipment, the saunas, the PEMF mats, um, the foot baths, the brain taps. Like we had these things um, that like we tapped into a ton as practitioners <laughs> at the end of the day or bring in our Love kids them. on the weekend. Like we call that a Friday night. Um, and, and we loved that because it's like, it's bucket filling, it's soul grounding. It's, you know, it's earthing, right? It's, it's, it's a matter of getting yourself kind of tapped in and rebooted. Um, and so it's interesting to think how many different ways we tap into frequency, we tap into those scalar waves that is definitely the virtual or remote muscle testing aspect. And, um, and Healy came about to me, like, I, I knew that this device was out there. We see it a lot as like an action attached to, um, MBSR, this mind, body, spirit release that, that I have been trained in. And so it's like, it's there. I knew it was a device and it was frequency, but it just, you know, like I can try to force outcomes all day long and that doesn't work very well. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy and it's very frustrating and you burn the candle at both ends. And then if I'm just super in my, if I am in the flow and I'm in my zone of genius, like the thing that I had this fleeting thought or prayer for is like, like it just, it lands in my lap. I just have to completely remain unattached to what it looks like and how it's coming and what the divine timing is. And I have to like, just duct tape myself and stay in the background. Right. Um, and so (laughs) it's very challenging. And so, um, I had like many, you know, healthcare quasi, you know, holistic healthcare practitioners No, most of us are coming to this because we've like been read the riot by, you know, the, the medical profession. And again, it's like, this is not to diminish any of that. We've, we've had broken bones and we've had to go to the ER and we've had like, I've had many things removed from my body prior to taking my health over when I was 18 to be like, wait a second, we're not going to just keep cutting these things out. Makes no (laughs) sense. Um, but that's what I grew up inside of. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so I too, you know, had, um, you know, if we want to throw it into like the sort of chronic mold Lyme, you know, category, that's because we are able to identify root cause, like from a non-diagnostic standpoint with muscle testing, it was like seeing what was going on. And then you add stress and you add stress and you had family stress and you had work stress and you had employees quitting and you, and all of a sudden it's just like, you know, mama crashes. And I happened to crash, like, as my three kids were crashing, I was sort of like the last one hanging on by (laughs) threads. 
And when I went down, I went down hard, harder than I've ever gone down in my life. And it was the first time that I was actually really scared for myself. I could tell my family, like my, my five under my roof were scared for me. Um, my mom thought I was dying of a bush flesh eating, she's like, you're just a flesh eating bacteria. I'm like, it's called staph. And here's why this is a problem right now. Right. Like mm-hmm. I took, had my tonsils taken out. My lymphatics are shot. Like no matter how hard I take care of them and try to stay on top of them, like there is a toxin in the background that is like stronger than me. And so I had to like get my head right and get all the things right. And so as I was um, recovering from that, I could feel like a flare coming up. This is a little over a year ago. And at the same time, my middle was like in in a flare, um, fainting once every six weeks sort of thing. And, you know, she was supposed to be behind the wheel and that was super scary. And I like took that privilege away and I'm trying to take care of me. I'm trying to take care of her. I'm trying to run this practice. Um, and I, I just had a like, oh I just need something to manage her like just to sneak attack her because I was getting tired of being the middleman I was clearing emotions I was clearing negative energy right and like we want that we want that ability skill set knowledge background and and yes and like if you were the bus driver you would just get tired of driving the bus sometimes right you'd be like screw it I'm not putting my blinker on (laughs) like you would want to go rogue right and And, so I I, I, I literally just, that was a fleeting thought. So I didn't, I didn't have much intention around it, to be honest with you. And then there I was a week later in, um, my friend's chiropractic clinic, you know, like on her table and she was running a Healy analysis on me and I looked at the results (laughs) and I was moved to tears because I was like fitness. Yeah. My fitness is fucked. Like I have been active my entire life. I have been fit and strong and like what the bridge is this cellulite and where did this come from and how is this happening and why is my lymph heavy and you know like why am I out of breath and why can't I no longer do like a CrossFit class I can't even enter the conversation of cardio and and weights at the same time without my body just going like right super Uh frustrating and so it made sense to me I was like this how does this thing that doesn't know me how does it understand me nobody else seems to understand me and um and also in that same moment, I had this like, oh my gosh, this is the, this is like the thing that's like, this was super resonant and it was just a super innate, like, this is the fit. Mm-hmm. And I knew in the moment that this was my like, oh, I just need a thing to sneak attack my kid. So a week after that, I'm, I am home. It's delivered. I started running it about three times a week for my then, um, 15 year old. And what I mean by that is she's downstairs in her room and I'm just running a program like on a different floor Mm -hmm. for her. And she knows I'm doing it, but I'm like, okay, now there was no like, okay, sit down, take a deep breath. She's doing her life. And I'm just be bopping on my app. And these really sharp edges started to soften. Like within a week, she was like an easier human to be with. And then I'm over here like, well, I want to drink the (laughs) Kool-Aid. So Mm -hmm. I know it's so funny as the mom, I was like, I had the experience with it. And yet it was like, oh, it's for her. And then I wrote it on her without writing it on myself. Like typical like mom. Typical mom. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, by the end of like seven to 10 days, I was using it daily. I was, I had 25 or 30 clients um, in it. And to this day, there's, there's only one or two clients that don't use it. And, but mm-hmm. so that's 99% of my practice, right. Uses this in every follow-up visit. And some, you know, have invested in it as an at home, you know, tool. I'm a big fan of empowering the families I work with, with like, what is in your at home healthcare toolkit? Like what yeah. is that toolbox made of? Are you confident in your ability to deal with the things that come up? Because you can go to that toolbox and pull things out, whether it be herbs, mm-hmm. tinctures, homeopathic remedies, little whoop de ding you know, tools, like whatever it is. Yeah. Um, because the more imp- powered and held and embraced and supported we are as moms we're like we got this right and then it helps to have your village to like right well and it really does like in the kind of like natural holistic um world it takes knowing and being confident with your stuff because it it does not work like allopathic where this is really where I see a lot of people struggle where they're kind of like eh, I did the belladonna I did the thing it didn't like work it's like yeah did you keep up on it? Did you apply the oils? Did you do the Epsom salt? Like there are some things to know and they're like, no, but I just gave them blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, 
bummer. Like you were, you were mm-hmm. so close or they just don't have it. And then, you know, it's 3 a.m. And you're like, fresh time's not open or the co-op's not open. Right. It is like that toolkit is the like middle of the night. Oh shit. What am I going to grab? Mm-hmm. And For like, sure. I've been in bed with screaming babies who need to only be balanced or only be held or only whatever. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, wait a minute. Like if the oils and the supplements and the things I normally do weren't working, I'm like, wait a minute, Healy, the second I click start, it's like, total husband, husband, do you see this? I like, like, do I try, what do I do? You know? And it's like the program runs. You don't it, breathe and you don't move. Yeah. You're like, can't move. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, maybe a few more times of that. And then you're like, wow, like this is actually helping when they get in that like super tight, rigid little baby state where they're not doing anything, mm-hmm. but it's it's expanding the toolkit. Yeah. So I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a, um, you know, outside of like, I'm a big fan of like our water distiller and these two are (laughs) are my literal top two tools. They've been the biggest game changers for the collective, like for all five of us and the dog, right. It's like every Mm -hmm. single one of us has, has had tremendous benefit from both of those investments. And, um, you know, I, many of the, like, before and afters of the Healy as a frequency device is like, when I got it, I was, I was on the front end of what ended up being like a 10 and a half week, like blow out my pelvic floor kind of cough, like awful. I got, I was on the cusp of like a little flare. We went on vacation, ended up staying in like a mold house on the beach. And I was sicker than a dog within about six hours, lungs like stinging. I've never had that experience in my life. Um, and it, it was, it was awful. And I <clears throat> was using the Healy just sort of like this, where you, you know, just vibrate like on the scalar waves and it was mm-hmm. effective. I could, I could feel that like, if I didn't have this, I'd be down. Mm-hmm. And because of this, I'm like, eh, I'm 60%, I'm 70%. I can function. I can make food for my family. I can't wait to go to sleep, but I, but like, I can do the things I can work mm-hmm. like that inside of this terrible, terrible cough. And then after like, I was literally t- like 10 weeks into it, I realized there's this, uh, you know, another way to use the Healy, more of like a frequency specific microcurrent. So like some wristbands and, you know, the wires attached to the device. I kid you not. So that becomes more of like a systemic cellular, you know, I don't think we can say treatment really, but say like handling mm-hmm. um, versus like the dancing around and the balancing of my six foot, you know, information I field. Know. Yeah literally within four to five days of using the wristbands, the microcurrent one time a day, that cough was completely gone. That you like, you can't make that up. That cough was going to like keep rolling, right? Just super depleting, you know, super in the midst of dealing with grief, like big stuff. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I think is so interesting, you know, like in our little goddess group the other day, we were having a conversation about like leadership and capacity and like expansion and the ability to hold energy and all of that. And I got really present to last year at this time was a one year anniversary of uh, losing my six-year-old nephew, which was fatal and tragic and absolutely devastating. And I just like, couldn't just like pick, Mm -hmm. pick myself up. Like it just was there every time grief, like the waves, Mm -hmm. man not fair. (laughs) And like the only way through it is like to sit and sit in the seasickness of it. Right. And just be there. And, and so then fast forward to now, like walking my mother-in-law through her hospice care journey and being able to hold that energy and like be so humbled by like, there's just this incredible like humility and, and beauty and wisdom. And it's funny weird. She's dying. It's not funny. She's funny. Like, and, and the fact that she's able to like have humor in the end of all this is super healing. Right. And so I am like, what a year ago train wreck. And here I am a year later with using my Healy every day, Mm -hmm. which is like super easy to do. It's not like a thing. Um, and, and I'm like, I've totally got this. I mean, I have my minutes and my, you know, like one of my daughters said like, mom, you just, you get like, what did they, what did they say? You, you like could cry so easily. And I was like, what? Like, I haven't like had a good cry in a while. And then I realized like, oh, you mean like when I tear up and they're like, yeah, I mean, you just tear up really easily. And I was like, that that's called being moved. Mm-hmm. That's like, I can be moved by something someone says or moved by being inspired or moved by 
like being in and seeing, uh, cultivating a certain energy, but it doesn't have me, yeah. you know? And yeah. like when mama is in the flow and like on fire and in her groove, then like your chances of everybody else being just like a little more stable around you is just exponentially high. Um, yeah. And really like the mothers, which is so funny actually, because we're talking about frequency, but it in the realm of desire and fire and the feminine work, like masculine, yeah. masculine energy leads the way, but the feminine frequency actually goes first, which is why you see so many like mothers mm. in the household, like they're, they control so many things, even mm -hmm. if you have like a very um, active and, um, you know, engaged father, but it's like, we set the tone as the mother. And so mm -hmm. when we balance out our frequency, of course, everybody else follows mm -hmm. because like we're more Zen or we're more chill, or we know sure. we have something to lean on when we get like cuckoo. <laughs> because yeah. What, what do we lean on otherwise? Like, well, I think we're just aware of our resources. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I go, you know, some people will be like, oh, like what's your latest favorite thing? And it's like, I, Michelle was asking me earlier, I've got this little like fascia blaster and I'm literally just all day. I'm like, oh my God, this feels like a cat rubbing <laughs> up against a, you know, post. It's like, it feels so good. And I, I like, it's not fading in and out. It's just like my feel good might be, might be a certain thing I'm doing for a couple of weeks. And then it like shifts to the other thing, but it's all inside of my self care. And where do I find that time in that space to love on myself, to like shut everything out. Even if I have to turn some stupid show on Netflix for 15 minutes and just be like, <laughs> rub it out. Right. Like it yeah. feels good. And I know what I need. And that was kind of what was happening a year ago is instead of like getting up before everybody else to exercise in the morning to like make sure I get it in so that I can just go, go, go all evening long after my work day is done. I was like, I'm going to just, I needed to, I need to like rest and I somehow can't rest like in my own bed. And I don't nap during that, like, shit, like, where am I going to find this time? So I was like, I wonder if I just put this time in the morning before everyone comes in, figure out how and where to exercise, even if it's just a walk and start mm -hmm. to just give myself a little grace and a little space and honestly it became it was such a game changer so like a month later when I got my Healy it, it like like it blew my little habit it like blew the pop stand yeah. and I, I couldn't believe how much um you know this might land the wrong way with people but I was like this has allowed me to be more self-centered than I've ever mm -hmm. had the chance to be in 47 and a half years like mm -hmm. nobody needs to wait that long to get more centered into themselves and to be able to like tap in and listen. And, um, yeah. and I can listen, I get a lot of information, but I will shut out this, this voice and this information because I'm like, give, give, giving. Um, and so it's just been this like literal gift that's kept on giving to me, <laughs> for me, yeah. by me, through me, around me, of me, like, and I don't mm -hmm. feel you know, most of my life I have felt like a, a like plumbing PVC pipe and like I'm the creator of the energy or, or the flow or the money or whatever. And it would be like, Meh, and it would just be like, go to mm -hmm. my family and everybody around me and all of these needs. And it's like, for the first time in, you know, for freaking decades, it's like that flow stops here and I get to be embraced by it and I get to be held by it. And it's like, on one end, there's like a leverage income opportunity with Healy, which is kind of like fun and cool. And I wasn't there for it. And didn't ha and I was like, no, I actually didn't know that. And thanks for sharing. And like, you do you, I'm just going to love the device. And, mm -hmm. um, and then like, it just organically occurred. And it's been like this tremendous blessing for, for my family and for my practice. And like, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how that happened or how that worked, but I do think it's because I was listening and I was in the flow. Like, mm -hmm. what's the easy button? Like, what is it that I need more mm -hmm. of? I need more time. I need more, more energy. I need more, you know, like fun and freedom and flexibility. Right. And so when, when the things that you do, like they lead to that easily and with grace, mm -hmm. just, okay. It, yeah. It's incredible. It's incredibly healing.
Well, and, and what's so nice about like, I, between you and I, we're, we're both practitioners. We can muscle test whatever our families mm-hmm. need. I can mm-hmm. intuitively ping into whatever they need, but mm-hmm. it takes a lot of energy to set aside the mother brain to hop into practitioner brain for yeah. family. And yeah, so it's hard. While we can separate those two, it's still actually hard to like remove mother brain and just like think of like what's going to help them right here, right now, and what application, mm-hmm. what thing. And the Healy really is that easy button because you just can run the app and it does a bioresonance scan over there and it's like, oh, your child needs a mental balance or your child needs bioenergetic something. And you're kind of like, oh yeah, they do, but I didn't have to think about it. For real? And then you get over there and you're like, the energy that we don't have to spend thinking about what they need yeah. is it's coming back tenfold because then we're just like, For sure. you know, mm-hmm. I love, I love the, like, I tell my, my kind of two older teenage daughters, um, you know, and moms, like we're, they're always harping on me. Like you're always in your computer and you're always on your phone. You're, I'm like, okay, just if you think about it for a second, I'm not TikToking and I'm not Snapchatting. <laughs> I'm, I'm ordering groceries. I'm paying bills. I'm answering client emails. I'm setting up the practitioner mentorship program. I'm, Mm -hmm. I am doing these things. I'm registering for soccer. I'm, you know, like paying your stinking dorm food bill for the year. Like everything that needs to be done is done by way of these two stinking like pieces of technology. And so also, oh, I'm also planning spring break and the summer road trip and Mm-hmm. now vetting out funeral homes like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> like yeah so it's not that I'm just on here like wasting time it stresses me out for my family to see me on either of the screens because there's already this already always listening of like oh, you know she's working and she doesn't have time for us it's like beep 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 when somebody needs when I get the text mom I have a really bad stomach ache at school can you send me a Healy yeah like did it did it did it like I'm already here like that took me sixty seconds maybe yeah so like it changes when their needs are like can you do this thing for me really quick probably <laughs> doing all the things on your you're on your computer anyway right or you're on your laptop anyway yeah like oh so I can just shift that energy toward you and go back to what I'm doing and I don't have to go into my muscle testing brain I don't have to go into like my notes for them and what was coming up when and what was the last remedy I gave them. It's like, you're right. I just get to lean into this incredible, like innate intelligence and go like, yeah, that fits. And, yeah. and then like and- handle and support them. Yeah. It's, and to, ha- and like, you know, our, our, your youngest, or excuse me, your oldest, my youngest are, you know, similar ages. And, um, you know, at eight and a half, he asks for the Healy every single night. It's like mm. part of the bedtime reading routine. He knows how to pull it up. He has his favorite sleep. Pro- he sits there and he, his little finger, he goes like this and he muscle tests <laughs> inside of like the whole sleep program. He has like two or three that are his favorites and he'll muscle test for which one, which I just tells oh. me. Gosh, can't like, even. And then I'm always like secretly, and he's like, "Put your phone down, mom. I don't want you to record me." Um, but to know that he asks for it, he wouldn't ask for it if he didn't feel that it made a difference. Or like, "Mom, I have a tummy ache. Sometimes on the way to school, mom, can you run a Healy when you drop me off?" It's like, "Yep, like just push the buttons as I'm driving my car, and know that like he felt more confident walking into school." Well, and that's like, that's what I love about, especially like the younger children, because they still have that affinity. It's like when we put them on supplements and they're like, yeah, yeah, give me more. It's like Sawyer would drink the powder of HMET and we're like, what are you doing? But he's just like black mouth and he's just loving life because he's like, this is helping me. This Mm -hmm. this like calms me down. This is whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they're the same way with the Healy where they're just kind of like, my boys will fight over it. Like I want it first. No, I want it. And I'm like, there's so there's more heat. There's all the healing in the world. We can have, you know, <laughs> there's time we can do you, then we could do you or like, yeah, so cute because you're like, they, they could feel a difference even at their young mm-hmm. little ages. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much for, for showing up, giving us your time, giving us your wisdom, your knowledge, sharing your story and really just for who you are in the world, mm-hmm. because I very deeply appreciate everything that you have always led and trailblazed for me. And I know that so many feel the same way. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Oh, yeah. I love you. 
I love you. <laughs> mm. I love it. I love it. All the mamas. We just yeah. need the village. We just have to create a sense of community wherever we go. We do. Yeah. yeah. And I will include in the email how to get connected with Nikki, where to find her, all the things so that you yeah. can just follow her. Always great content from her personal page and the business page as well. So I'll put both of those in there. And awesome. yeah, I hope you have you. a wonderful evening. Thank you bye. so much. Yeah. Bye.